In this video, I'm going to show you how you can tell whether a common chemical process is endothermic or exothermic. So the way that we tell whether a reaction or process is endothermic or exothermic in general is with this delta H here. Delta H denotes the change in enthalpy. And this simply means the heat evolved or transferred in a reaction or process at a constant pressure. The way that we calculate delta H or the change in enthalpy is by taking the enthalpy of the products and subtracting the enthalpy of the reactants from it. So for an endothermic reaction, delta H is positive or greater than zero. And this refers to a situation in which heat is transferred from the surroundings into our system. An exothermic reaction, on the other hand, is when delta H is negative or less than zero. And this refers to a situation where heat is transferred from our system out into the surroundings. You can see these situations represented graphically down here. So in this first case, I have an exothermic reaction. On the y-axis, I have enthalpy, and you can see that the reactants start out with the higher enthalpy than the products do. The enthalpy goes down from reactants to products, right? So if we were to use our equation up here and subtract the enthalpy of the reactants from the enthalpy of the products, well, the enthalpy of the reactants is bigger than the enthalpy of the products, right? So if we subtract this from this, we're gonna get a negative number. And that means delta H will be less than zero, so this reaction would be exothermic. You can see the exact opposite down here for an endothermic reaction. Here, the enthalpy of the reactant starts out lower than the enthalpy of the products. The enthalpy went up from reactants to products. So if I were to subtract this from this, I would have a positive number, or delta H greater than zero. So this is an endothermic process. So now I want to talk about how you can tell whether a phase change is endothermic or exothermic. And I have that written here, and notice I used water as my substance, but this works for any substance. So let's talk about melting ice into liquid water and then boiling that liquid water into water vapor. So when you melt ice into liquid water, what are you doing to the ice? You're putting heat from the surroundings into the system, right? Well, that is an endothermic reaction. So melting ice is actually an endothermic process. Similarly, when you boil liquid water to evaporate it into water vapor, you're also putting heat into the water. You're transferring heat from the surroundings into the system. When you put a boiling pot of water on your stove, you're putting heat into the pot, right? So this is also an endothermic process. We can go the opposite direction too. If we start out with water vapor and we condense it into liquid water, well, we took heat away from the water vapor, right? To turn it into liquid. So heat went from the system out into the surroundings. This is an exothermic reaction. So condensing water vapor into liquid water is actually an exothermic process. Similarly, if we were to freeze liquid water into ice, again, we're taking heat out of the system and taking it into the surroundings. We're taking heat from the liquid water and making it colder so that it freezes into ice. So again, this is an exothermic process. Finally, I want to talk about a common situation that you may be asked about on a chemistry exam. So let's say you have a reaction occurring in an aqueous solution here in a beaker. And by aqueous, I just mean it's occurring in a solution where the solvent is water. And you start the reaction at room temperature. And at the end of the reaction, you can feel the beaker and it feels hot. So was this an endothermic or an exothermic process? Well, you can see here, this must have been an exothermic process. So don't get confused here. Although an exothermic reaction means heat is transferred from the system to the surroundings, so you may think the beaker would get colder because it's losing heat, think about where it's losing that heat to. It's losing the heat to the surrounding water. So the surrounding water in which the chemical reaction is occurring is going to heat up. So if you have a reaction occurring here in this beaker in the solution of water that is exothermic, it's going to make the surrounding water hotter. Oppositely, if we have a, the start of a reaction at room temperature and it occurs as an endothermic process, 
the beaker at the end is going to feel cold. And although heat is transferred from the surroundings into the system in an endothermic reaction, you have to think about what is my surroundings and what is my system. Well, the system would be the chemical reaction and the surroundings would be the water, the surrounding water. So heat is being pulled from the surrounding water into the chemical reaction to make the chemical reaction work. So don't get tripped up by these two situations. So I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please feel free to hit that thumbs up button. It really goes a long way. I'll see you in the next video.